All right. Looks like everybody's good to go. All right, guys. We'll uh we'll let coach just kind of give give an opening statement just kind of on, on where we are. And then uh we'll take some questions. If you guys could uh just use the hand raise fun hand raise function and then um we'll uh let you guys ask questions one by one. So coach, go ahead and let you get started. All right. Uh I got a brutal cold and some allergies up here. So uh sorry if I have to blow my nose or do anything. Uh yeah, so Excited to be the SEC tournament. Um, it's a major accomplishment just to get here, especially this year, considering the strength of the league and um, everything we've gone through. Uh, I think that our, you know, our pitching, our starting pitching uh, this past weekend was the best it's been all year. Um, so really encouraged by that. Uh Obviously, we're going to have to piece it together tomorrow somehow um, to get, you know, we can't really bring anybody. I mean, Detmer could probably come back uh, Wednesday. Uh, he should be fine for that. And then we could, uh, you know, everybody could fall back into place, hopefully. But um, but I was excited about uh, our starting pitching from this past weekend. And I uh, thought Sadeo threw really well. Uh Garcia made some really big pitches. So I think we're trending in the right direction. Um, obviously, Jace had a great weekend. Happy for him. But, uh, you know, we just need to try and hang around this thing as long as we can and and try to extend our season past this week. Very good. All right. Uh, Richard, let's go ahead and let you get the first question. Uh, yes, Coach. Uh, obviously, you met Tennessee early on in the season. What do you see from them that is different now than when you faced them back in March? And also, how do you think your team has changed from the one that played up in Knoxville? Um, I just literally 30 minutes before I hopped on here with you guys, started watching video. Um, they're budding. Uh, they're playing this little more action game rather than just sitting around and banging the ball. Uh, they've reshuffled their pitching around, uh, put Chase Burns in the bullpen. Uh, and I, I think he's been pitching really well in that role for them until this past weekend. He had a rough one against South Carolina, so I haven't heard who they're pit they are pitching. Be interested to see if he's if they put him back in the rotation or not. Um, but they're still, you know, just so super athletic, um, super uh, you know, all kinds of power. Uh, so you know, it's a team that you can see winning a national title when you have Doe Lander and beam and you know all the different arms that they throw at you uh, our team uh, number one Brett Minnick's in the lineup uh, we've played I think 37 of our 55 games have been played without Minnick or Werner or both and so to me that's a big selling point for us moving forward uh, you know in terms of our you know resume or whatever they call it for the NCAA baseball committee um, you know we uh We've won six of our last eight series, and uh, I think our – again, like I said, I think our, our we have we have more of an idea on roles from a pitching staff standpoint. Still nobody's really taken the ball right-handed and given us what we want. Uh, but, you know, guys like Sadeo and, and Garcia are completely different pitchers today than they were – even Lampkin, completely different pitchers today than they were – uh, back then, but Lampkin certainly won't pitch. <clears throat> um, so, you know, I think, and, and I think we have some guys that are, you know, uh, Jay's uh, full SEC season, a lot of confidence. Uh, I think Targotch, uh, ending the right way. I think Coffer has, I mean, every game he plays, he gets better. So, um, I mean, I like the way we're headed, uh, but I mean, Tennessee is just super talented team. Travis, you want to get a question? Yeah, uh, curious how how much do you, in your experience, do you see that conference tournaments can change a, a bubble to not bubble or or a three seed to a two seed um, in, in that experience? And where do you kind of see y'all's situated heading into the tournament? Are you talking about situated from an NCAA perspective? Yes. Uh, 
the, there's no difference between being a three seed or a two seed. The only difference is you get to wear a, a home white uniform or a road uniform. There's there's no difference between the two, uh, for me. Um, I'll take the four seed in Anchorage right now. To be honest with you, um, but uh, you know, I think I think the strength of the league speaks for itself. I think the fact that, like I said, we've you know we've won six of our last eight SEC series. Uh, I saw somewhere today, not that last year matters, but in the last two years, you know, we're tied for first in terms of we've won 14 of our 20 SEC series. So that has to stand for something, maybe not last year's, but going six and four in this league in terms of the series, including at Kentucky, at Auburn, who's not Auburn maybe playing as good a baseball as anybody, and then uh, Florida at home. So the problem, you know, we had the, the two sweeps in there, right? If we had just avoided that, that would have made a big difference in our record. But, um, I think I think people that know baseball uh, and understand the strength of the league. I mean, you have eight or nine potential hosts in the league, and if you have eight or nine potential hosts in one league, then certainly it's got to be at least a ten-team league to get in the NCAA tournament. But you know, those those are my decisions to make. Um, I do believe we're worthy, and uh, like I said, if we can get through, I mean, can the tournament help you? Sure. I mean, I mean, it, it, uh, but I had a, a member of the committee tell me over the winter that he actually thought Ole Miss had a better chance to get in last year, only losing one game versus getting into the double elimination round and adding two more losses. So, you know, what? How do how do you even answer that? I, I don't even I don't even know how to answer that. So, uh, we, we're just going to try to win as many games as we can without putting anybody in jeopardy from an injury standpoint and then uh i mean we'd like to win the thing i mean there's a championship to be played for so <laughs> we'd like to win it uh but that you know that all starts with just getting to the second round uh through tomorrow and then i think did y'all have a special dinner last night uh yeah uh, uh i didn't get to go uh trevor uh trevor werner made friends you know uh kind of connected with a young man last year uh who was going through some challenging times as a young teenager i believe and and uh, stayed connected to the family all of our kids are awesome kids and they interact with the with the uh community at a really you know high level and and uh, they stayed connected they came to see us i think in auburn and they came to see us in starkville and uh, the family asked if they could feed the team and so uh, I think at their church, maybe. And so um, about two thirds of the team bust out there yesterday, about 20 minutes outside of Birmingham and had a great meal and a, a really good time. The rest of us, we had about four or five pitchers uh, that haven't pitched like Sexton, uh, Tucker, um, Dillard, Hogan. Um, so we had we had to go to a high school yesterday and get those guys some simulated game time so that they're ready to help us if we hang around this tournament. You're allowed to expand this roster from 27 to 30 for the conference tournament, and then it goes back to 27 for the NCAA tournament. So we need to get those guys on the mound and get, you know, Caden Kent and Tucker and Chestnut and Bard, who's back now. Uh, we need to get those guys at bat. So the coaching staff and those guys, we uh, we went to Hoover High School and did that while everybody else went to that that dinner which was really nice of those people to do. Tyler, Tyler Shaw. Yeah, coach, you know, you said, you know, it's tournaments, so you guys want to go out and win this thing. How important is it to you to kind of get that experience this week I mean, or does it help um, preparing for, you know, a regional like setting, um, you know, the, uh, with the double elimination and, and all the games you'll play this week. I uh, all the games I hope we play, but uh, yeah, you know, I go back and forth on that. Uh, I, I'm a, you know, in all my years as a head coach, I'm, you know, again, the statement is if there's a championship to be played for, we want to win it. But I've also, uh, in 2015, we had a really good team at TCU. We went 0 and 2 uh, in the Big 12 tournament. And the first text message I read when I got back to my to the bus after being eliminated was from Augie Garrido. And he said, this is the best thing that could ever happen to your team. 
and go home and rest, get ready. And then you guys know how that <laughs> season ended, uh, uh, ended up playing them at A&M in the Super Regional. That was the uh, 16 inning game and then go to the College World Series. So I think uh, I think there's a lot of value. There's obviously always value in winning. And it, since we are not assured of anything beyond this week, uh, we need to play well. Um, but if you held a gun to my head and, and I, I knew we were in the NCAA tournament, then there's uh, there's also value to rest. So I think you, you try and manage both. When you're – like if it was this time last year, I think the best – the best thing for our team last year was we went two and one. That was the best thing for our team. Although we wanted to win the championship, uh, that ended up being the best thing for our team. And from a rest standpoint, um, to get ready for the uh, for the NCAA tournament. But right now we're not in that mode. We we need to win games. Let's get a question from Cole Thompson. Jim, just to kind of go back a little bit on what's going on with the SEC, Jace gets named to the all SEC freshman team. Just where have you seen his development throughout the season? And this for him to be able to set the record this past weekend, what does it mean for him to have this distinguished honor building forward with the program? I mean, Jace is the ultimate team guy, so I think he would much rather be in Omaha than, than have those awards. But part of us, and, you know, hopefully getting there is him – He's a he's a marquee player. I mean, uh, at some point tonight, I'm going to go back through and I, I don't I can't remember if I've coached a guy who's hit 20 home runs and stolen 20 bases on a college team. Um, I may have, but I'm, I don't remember it. And and so certainly he's a guy that is capable. You know, he's capable of doing anything on a baseball field. Uh, a problem considering playing him in center field tomorrow because this ballpark is massive. There is a lot of ground to cover, and if we play Targotch in the outfield, then we need some help out there. Um, but he's, he's just so capable of doing anything on a field, which is why he was a big you know, prospect in terms of the draft. And if he continues to stay healthy and, and progress, I mean, he's he, – if, if you're putting up those kind of numbers in this league, then – all those guys become big leaguers and it doesn't, it doesn't guarantee him anything, but if he keeps going in that direction, that's what he's going to be. He's a guy that everybody here is going to be either asking for a ticket or paying for a ticket to watch him play one day. Uh, ben Peck. <clears throat> ben. Yeah, coach, uh, you kind of touched on it earlier, but how do you uh, talk about in terms of messaging to the team shifting from, you know, doing the right things, process, and over the course of a long season with baseball being baseball, you should yield the results you want to yield with kind of the urgency and the immediacy of, okay, now we don't necessarily have that wiggle room of letting things play out. How do you, I guess, how do you kind of try to get the guys to handle that aspect of it? That's a great question. Um, I haven't really, I have an older team, so I have a leadership council that I, talk to and they are able to keep me you know informed on the pulse of the team other than you know I, I might say hey I'm reading this in the team what do you guys think and they'll say well yeah you're right or they may say no you're you're way off it's this and so uh I really haven't had any conversation with them about uh the NCAA tournament or could be because I don't think you can play baseball that way I mean they they're all on social media I'm sure they I'm sure they read the all the things that are projected and stuff like that. And, and um, that they know that, that we need to win as many games. And I mean, again, we're here to win a championship. I mean, we got a chance to, to win an championship. It's oh. going to be a long road uh, with a big, really big, big turtle. But um, I think kids today know what's at stake. I don't need to put any more heat on them than they already have. <laughs> Uh, back over to Richard. Uh, hi, Coach. Just wondering, uh, have you named a starting pitcher for tomorrow's ball game? I'm pretty sure it's going to be Juan Seen. I haven't talked to him yet. Uh, but, you know, his last – he got those four outs on Saturday as quick and as clean as you could ever want. Um, and I was greatly concerned about – you know, he hasn't been a, an extreme strike thrower, and all he did out of the bullpen was those strikes. So, you know, I asked him after the game, do you think you can take the confidence from that? 
and just build it right into a start. Don't make a start any bigger than what it is. And he said he could. So I'm going to sit down. Uh, I'm going to sit down with him here a little bit. And, but that's probably the direction we'll go. There's, I don't know what other, I don't know anything else we would do. Uh, those, I don't think there's really any other option to be honest with you, unless we were just going to pull something out of a hat, which I don't know if we're at that point yet. And then I know you're no stranger to conference tournaments, but last year with it being your first go around an Uber, what were your biggest takeaways and what did you think you learned uh, that can help you manage it the second time around? Uh, well, last year we had the buy. Um, so that was huge. Um, it felt weird only losing one game, but getting kicked out of a double elimination tournament. So that was weird. Uh, but I thought the experience was amazing. Um, they, it's, it's, it's a mini version of Omaha. You know, you get police escorts to the field, to and from the field after every game. Um, the fan fest area, the, um, after your, after the practice this morning, the kids got to go into this locker room thing and, pick out these cool gifts and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's, this is, this is the big leagues of college baseball and, and the kids get treated that way. So uh, fans are awesome. The whole city here is great. Um, so it's just an overall, just a really, really, really good experience. And um, I think it, it does help you. I think the SEC schedule more than prepares you for a regional or super regional. I think what this prepares you for is if you make it to Omaha, this is kind of what it feels like. And it's your magnitude, bigger stadium in Omaha, but in terms of the way you're treated and how the whole city stops what they're doing, um, that's what they do in Birmingham and that's what they do in Omaha. All right, guys, let's, uh, we got one more question from Cole Thompson <laughs> and then, uh, then we're going to go ahead and call it after that. Cole. Coach, you kind of mentioned that you have a little bit of a veteran roster and a roster that's been here before. When you look at guys like Ryan and Trevor and um, and Jordan who have played in Birmingham, what does that do to show the younger guys and also the transfers that come from different conferences what it's like to play in Hoover? Uh, I mean, how many SEC tournaments have those guys played in? One. <laughs> I think <laughs> – you know. You know, because I don't think they were in it in 21. And before that, there, there in 20, there was no tournament, right? And so, uh, so yeah, they don't have that much experience. But the fact that they've played all, all the way through the college series, I think, I think you, you really can't understand it until you go through it. Every, every weekend in this league feels like a super regional. And even when I was outside of the league, I didn't believe that. You know, I think there are times in the Big 12 that, that feels like that when you're playing the right teams, but it's not every weekend. And and in and in this this situation, at least the ones I've been in, I haven't been to all the other schools yet, but it feels like a super regional. So so I think that, you know, this is more like Omaha, where it's more of a neutral crowd, you know. Uh it's not as intense as a actual road series. Uh, there are some schools that travel better than others. So if we were to play one of those schools, uh, then maybe it would feel a little differently. But, uh, but but I think, you know, it's it's I hate to downplay it, but it's the truth. It's just baseball. And uh, we got to play well. We got to throw strikes. We got to get make the routine plays and we got to get timely hits. It's, you know, I know that's coaching, but that really that really is true. I don't I think these guys handle. But it, it I will tell you, it's cool when you look at a guy like Hunter Haas. <laughs> who left the Pac-12 to come here. And he, he was a little wide-eyed today at practice, he was, you know, because you see this stuff. You see the SEC tournament on TV, and and he, I don't care what anybody says, no matter where you are in the country, if you're not playing, that's what's on TV. That's what you turn on to watch. And so, uh, this you know, this is way different than playing at a spring training complex at 118 degrees in, in Scottsdale. Like, this is this is real baseball and, and real uh, – I mean, that's real baseball, too, but I'm just saying with crowds and intensity, um, you know, this is this is the big place. Very good. Guys, we appreciate it. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, guys, right. obviously, obviously, if you all have anything from, for me or for Coach moving forward this week, just you guys know to reach out and we'll get you guys taken care of. Cool. Thank all you. All right, you guys have a good week. Appreciate, I, Thanks, I appreciate guys. you, fellas. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Bye -bye. Thanks.